Since we're replacing the car's engine, we'll need a new source of heat for the cabin. This broken space heater offered a pair of opportunities. First, if we can get the heating element working, it's possible we could use it in the car. Second, we needed a space heater to test how good our new insulation was. This little foot that tells it when it's falling over so you don't burn your house down, that's broken, so it thinks it's always fallen over and it's always gonna burn your house down. It is AC, of course. So we got our first modification. Maybe there's screws in here. This probably won't work because it's AC. Well, it was already broken, so we can't break it any worse. Challenge accepted. <laughs> we found so a bug. A, a pupa of some sort. That's fucking gross. gross as shit. I'm being told I can't film the flushing <laughs> of the bug because the bathroom is being used in a more traditional way as well. Ooh. Yeah, I don't see anything converting it to DC, so they must be AC motors. Something happened to this switch. See how that plastic is? Uh, oh, wow. Looks like it may have got a little warm. Yeah. What could have caused that? Now you can get your toilet content, because I don't have to pee anymore. All right, let's flush it. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in piss. I can't believe that happened. Okay, okay, let's see if I can do it again on recording. There we go, there we go. Ah, oh, should I be concerned? I guess you didn't read the card that they give you when you get your vaccine. <laughs> Tom is magnetic. I'm documenting my superpower. So the way this works normally is... Yeah, that'll push this up This is the always depressed oh, until, oh, until right. it tips and then it opens. So okay. I think there was just gunk on there. It, yeah, it probably was just like frozen out. We're gonna see if we fixed it. Oh, the light's on. Light's on. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just turning the heat up, too. Oh, okay, well, we fixed it. Oh, look at that power. Oh my god, it's called kilowatt. Resistance is mounting. It turns out this space heater consumes a shit ton of watts. Between that and it being AC, we may need to find something different to become our car's resistance heater. But we might not. The fan motor might be the only part of the heater that requires AC. We'll keep working on this in a future video. In the meantime, we can use the heater to test the insulation. <sighs> The only thing I think we're getting done today well, related we, to the we car. We fixed the heater. We did fix the heater. You must apply pressure. We turned on the air conditioning with the windows open to produce this winter wonderland. I'm kidding. The Axis doesn't have air conditioning. Jason tried to install the door panel, but he put it in the wrong place. Better. Guys, I brought us some dinner. Mmm. Just pop this in the microwave. <laughs> we are going to be heating this up. We don't actually have to, for the test, put these inside the door panels, we'll get basically the same performance, just taping them there. And then we're gonna know if it's worth installing them, which is the whole point of this. Because uh, if, if we're not actually saving a substantial amount of energy, then what the fuck? Oh shit, did it, uh... Hey Dave, we need your gloveless hands. Tom, you know you're supposed to tape your drugs on the inside of the door panel. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Oh god. This does look like we're, we're, we're like staging some kind of contraband. This is the space heater we fixed, and uh, we're gonna use it for this test even if we don't use it for the actual heating element later on. We're using the hole Dave found in the floor to run the cable through so we don't have to crack a window for the test. The power cable wouldn't fit through the floor hole, so we did what any reasonable person would do in this situation. Don't do this at home. Or just at all. Don't do this. If you had a vice, I would put it in that. Oh, I have many vices. We also do home repairs. Trying to feed this cable through the hole, but this warning tag's in the way, so... I guess we gotta get rid of that. We don't need warnings, we know what we're doing. Ta-da! Yeah, all right. And all it took was mutilating it. This is going out through under, through the hole uh, in the floor. Um, it goes to the space heater that we fixed. I'll get a chunk of wood or something to put it yeah, on. Yeah, we have our feet taped to the doors. And this is our tent, basically, our ceiling quilt. All of this is just to simulate what we would do in the final scenario. And then we'll do a test to see how much heat the cab retains. And then we'll do another control without the insulation, having taken all this beautiful work out. The plan was to run the heater in the cab with and without insulation. We'd measure four surfaces throughout the car with a thermocouple before the test, after the test, before the control, and after the control. It was the delta we were interested in. If we were real engineers or QA people building a mass manufactured EV, we'd uh, do more than one test, but that would be boring. <laughs>
73.9, not COVID. Not COVID. I'll get the tire so sure. You're not supposed to like abandon uh, the animal on a hot car. <laughs> we were going to lock Tom in the car. We can't see his face because of this lovely <laughs> blanket fort that he's hanging out in. <laughs> Three point varying. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. I'm very cramped in here. <laughs> <laughs> nice knowing you. All right, let's go. <laughs> this may actually be the dumbest thing we've done yet. Give us a toot. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! We ran it for four minutes. 71 on my shoulder. You want to open the door? Are you sure? Uninstalling. Will you please take this short survey and tell us why you uninstalled your snot? <laughs> so proud to hold this fruit of our labor in my hand. <coughs> do we have enough time? Yeah, just 10 minutes. It takes okay. four minutes to do the test. Oh, you're just doing four. I thought we were doing 10. Okay. Yeah, I thought we were doing 15. So that seemed like a fast 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, I got bored. Pre Control. Greetings now. So there were a couple of differences um, that I subjectively noticed. First off, my feet are fucking cold without the insulation. It's possible that the control was flawed because the heater had already warmed up by running it earlier during the experiment. And measuring the surfaces rather than the air could explain why my feet felt warmer in the test than in the control. Averaging out the four measurements we took did show an improvement with the insulation installed. That was a relief since I was sort of worried we'd somehow just make the car worse. It took about four minutes to heat the cab to a comfortable temperature with no insulation. It took about 14% less energy to do the same thing with insulation. If we assume we could turn the heat down to about 20% of those watt hours to keep the cab feeling comfortable, then that means that if you were sitting in the car with the heat on going nowhere, our insulation buys you an extra six hours of warmth. Pretty useful in the post-apocalyptic use case, or if you get stuck in a snowstorm in Virginia. To see what this translates to if you're actually driving the car, we used an EV range calculator, which I don't fully trust since it was designed before our battery chemistry became popular. As we've noted in the past, the worst thing about the Acti is its aerodynamics. It has a truly abysmal drag coefficient of 0 0.6. According to this math, which again I don't really trust, if we're averaging 30 miles an hour, our car should have a range of 81 miles. If we run the heat, our 81 mile range gets reduced to 64 miles. If we add insulation, we get three of those miles back for a range of 67 miles. Our goal for the insulation was to improve the ability of the cab to retain heat by 10%, which we exceeded. But what about the LED lighting we installed earlier? With these drive system numbers, we can now calculate how many miles all of our efficiency improvements will earn us. What we're interested in is winter nighttime driving. We start by assuming that we don't lose any mileage just because the batteries will perform worse in the cold, an assumption which isn't correct. But we would have trouble modeling otherwise without doing some test drives, which we're not ready for. So, in the winter at night, averaging 30 miles an hour, with incandescent lights and the heat on, we'd lose about 25 miles of range. In the winter at night, with LEDs on, heat on, and insulation installed, we'd lose only 17 miles of range. That's about a 32% improvement. Our goal had been 50%, but we pulled that number out of our butts, so whatever. That 32% improvement gives us 8 miles further we can drive in the winter at night, averaging 30 miles an hour, with these modifications. It's 9.1 miles from my house to Dave's, so the amount we save would get you almost all the way there, though at the very end, you would have to get out and push. There are a ton of untested assumptions in this guesswork, which we need to test. We've always said the only real way to see how far the car will go is to test it. It should also be theoretically possible to calculate how much money we'll save on electricity thanks to these improvements, and then compare that against what the components cost us. But for that, we'd have to make more assumptions about how often it'll be driven. That's just too many assumptions for me. I also have a feeling it won't actually have saved us money, and I'm getting bored again. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Show your support for mini trucks with a sticker from our store. We also have a GoFundMe. The links are in the description. And join us next time as we unbox and test a surprising rescue from a garbage bin, a working solar panel.